as a part of the project management course, the whole fundamentals of it is the system development cycle, which is basically the ideology behind how we come to develop a solution in information processes and technology. It consists of five stages, which are all symbolise the different parts of project management. So let's begin with understanding the problem. So it is in understanding the problem that we have to fully understand what is existing in the current system. So this means interviewing and surveying participants who use the current system, analysing how that system works, conducting a requirements report and looking at what parts of the system need to exist if we were going to develop a new system, and perhaps even sometimes making a requirements prototype, a similar system that we can modify and try to get a better understanding of what's already working in place. Once we believe we fully understand the existing system and what issues exist, we then start planning the new solution. And when we do plan a new solution, we do what's known as a feasibility study. A feasibility study is comprised of four main parts. Economic feasibility, which is the financials of the new system. Do we have enough money? Technical feasibility, the technology, hardware and software that will be used by the new system. Operational feasibility, whether or not the participants have the skills and the background to work with the technical needs of the new system and scheduling feasibility. Do we have the time to implement this system in an appropriate manner? We then, after we do our feasibility study, choose an appropriate solution, okay, and then go on with our actual project. Okay, now there are some factors we need to take into account when also planning how we're going to develop our new solution. And in this case, we choose development approaches. Now these will be covered more at a later date, but the development approaches we're going to look at are traditional, outsourcing, prototyping, customization, participant development and agile methods. Once we've decided all this, we develop our requirements report. Okay, and then we get on to developing our actual solution. So we look at the designing. So when we're designing, we are clarifying the relevant information processes of the system. Who are the participants? What's the data and information? And what uh, information technology will be used? We might refine any existing prototypes we've made to actually start seeing what changes can be made to the old system to make the new system. Okay, we can do what's known as participant development and getting the actual participants involved in the actual development of the solution so it is custom towards them. And we look at the tools we can use for uh, showing our idea. And this can include context diagrams, data flow diagrams, decision trees, decision tables, data dictionaries and storyboards. These are all graphical tools that can represent our ideas. Once our solution has now been designed, we need to implement it. Okay, so we've got to think about how will this solution be put back into the organisation that we've made it for. So we need to think of how data will be converted to the new system. We must establish what method of conversion will be used. A direct conversion where the system is taken over straight away by the new system. A parallel conversion where the old system and the new system are run side by side. A phase conversion where the new system is gradually implemented into the workplace. Or a pilot conversion where a certain department or store location uses the new system for a period and when it all works out fine, other stores and departments pick up the new system. The final thing we need to think about is participant training. How will they be trained? Who gets trained by training specialists? What documentation will be provided? How will help desk be involved in, supply, in satisfying the needs of the participants? These are all things that need to be considered. Once the system has been implemented and is in place, we then have to finally test the new system. Looking at the system, has it met initially what we discovered when we're trying to understand the problem? Does it meet the requirements of our requirement report? Okay, so we need to then measure whether the system was a success. We need to test that it's working effectively. We need to evaluate its success and then implement a maintenance plan so that in the long term, the system will be used and maintain and stay working. So we need to review the effects of the system on the participants, people and the environment. On top of this system development cycle in the project management um, unit, we also need to look at some other factors, which are basically the techniques for managing a project. We must remember projects are involved teams, so we need good communication skills. Okay, people need to be able to talk to each other. They need to use skills such as active listening, showing their team members that they understand what they are talking about. They need negotiation skills so that when there are disagreements, a resolution can be found. We need to understand that there are consequences to teams who do not work well, including financial loss, employment loss and missed opportunities. 
okay? And we need to use specific tools so that team members can communicate with each other. Developing a camp chart so that tasks are scheduled and group members know when things are due. Journals and diaries that document what's been achieved on what dates so that other team members can see, okay, this task has been done. And management and uh, funding management and communication management plans for the management of financial data and developing a means of communicating with our team members. Okay, so overall, I hope you have enjoyed this introduction to the project management unit with its great focus on the system development cycle.